I understand the difference between access and filter operations, but sometimes the optimizer seems to switch between them for no apparent reason. Can you explain this? And we'll have a crack at it. So the first thing is, let's talk about what these two things are. When you see them in an execution plan, the term access normally means we access uh, a subset of rows using an index. We probe the index to directly get a subset of the rows in the table. A filter is with a set of rows, whether it's already been subsetted by the access command or whether you're just scanning the entire table, is a filter is effectively a check against rows as they become candidates. So access says hone in on a subset of the rows and filter says with that subset, or if there was no access with all the rows, simply check them as you scan them generally applying a where clause predicate. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at both those tonight and then we'll explore the question, which is how come the optimizer sometimes to have this strange jump between them? So with that, let's jump onto a demo. I'm gonna create a table called T. It's a copy of DBA tables, around about 40,000 rows or so, but I've chosen a where clause here so that I only get five distinct owners. So I've got the Sys system schema, Scott HR and Apex 23. Nothing special about those. I just knew that there were, there were five that existed in this database. And so I've got five distinct owner columns. I gather some stats and then I run a query and there's no indexes on this table yet. So I do select star from T where owner equals sys, table name equals triple G. And we can see we do table access full. And down below we have this predicate information. And it says on line one, when you were scanning the table, we did a filter. And the filter is very simple. The filter is just, okay, as I look at each row, simply is the table name triple G and is the owner sys. That's what a filter is. As rows pass through me, I'm gonna filter out the ones that I'm interested in. Let me now put an index on that table, an index on owner and table name, because you can imagine that's the query we're about to be running. So now I'll do the same query, where owner equals sys and table name equals triple G. The plan has changed. We've now changed to using an index. And it says line one is table access by index row ID batched. It's a batched index lookup, but the key one is line two. It's an index range scan. If we jump down to the predicate information, you can see it says I'm doing an access as opposed to a filter. What this is saying is I can navigate directly through the index to that particular index key, the index key being sys and GGG. And from there, I can get the rows I need. I don't need to do any other filtering because the only two predicates on this, on this query are owner and table name, and that's what the index is on. So I'm only doing an access. That'll get me straight to the subset of rows that I require. It automatically does the filtering, so to speak. If I was to add a third predicate, so now I'm doing owner equals sys, table name triple G, and table space equals TS. Well, table space name is not in the index. So now we have the combination of the two. You can see there in the plan, it's still an index lookup. But on line two, down in the predicate information, we've done access. We've narrowed the set of rows across all rows down to just those with owner equals sys and table name equals triple G. With that subset of rows, I can now apply a filter. Now I can only apply the filter at line one, which is when I go back to the table to look at the data because table space name is not in the index. So effectively, I now get that subset of rows from the index with that subset of rows, read the tables, and now actually filter to get the final predicate applied. So we can see we can have access, we can have filter, and of course we can have access and filter all in the same query. If I augment the query a little bit, and now I'm saying where owner equals sys and table name is in F and G. So now I have sort of an or. You can see I've still managed to do it with access. You can see down at line three, it says access owner equals sys. So come in through sys and then probe for the table name being F or G, but it can all be managed through the index lookup. And if I extend that to three values, it also still uses access. Extend it to four values, it still uses access. And you'll, can see, you'll be seeing where I'm going there as we continue on this demo. Even with five, nothing required a filter. I just did the whole thing via an index because owner and table name were in the index. So everything's working totally fine as you'd logically expect. I'll drop that table. I'm gonna recreate that table now but not with just the five schemas, but with all the schemas in this database. I can't remember offhand how many there are, but you know, an Oracle database with default schemas normally has maybe a 20 or so, so a few of my own, let's say 25, it doesn't really matter. What we have now is a different data distribution, and we're gonna repeat this demo. I'm gonna put the index on straight away, so we'd expect that when you do queries on owner and table name, we will do an access. And let's see if that's the case. Owner equals sys, table name equals F. And as you can see, just like we've seen before, table access by index row ID, index range scan, 
and all the hard lift, all the heavy lifting was done in the access phase. Line two, owner equals sys and table name equals F. At which page you're probably thinking, where is this going? You're just going to repeat this. Okay, let's do this now. Owner equals sys, table name in F and G. Look at what's happened. Line two, which is only an index scan, so we're still only on an index scan here on line two. But if we jump down to the predicate information, it said, well, what I'll do is I'll access all the rows that just have an owner of sys, and then I'll do a filter. So I'm still filtering within the index, but I'm not doing an access anymore. Rather than going access for sys and f and sys and g, it said I'll just get the owner predicate first. Yep, gives me a range of rows with the owner equals sys, and then I'll scan along them inside the index using a filter. One of the things that you'll see out on the intertube somewhere is that, well, you can overcome this by using the hint batch table access by row ID. And if you throw that hint in, and this is what happens when you use undocumented hints, you'll see that nothing changes. It actually says you still came in on a sys, and then we actually filtered some rows within the index. The query I had before, which was just sys and a single predicate of f, it used an access. So somewhere in there, the optimizer said, I'm going to jump to using this sort of combination method. I can put in this hint. Once again, another undocumented hint. Num index keys for this particular table and index is two. And when I do that, notice we've now reverted. Down in the predicate information, it says on line three, I'll be doing it all of it with an access command. So I'll go in on sys and table name f, and then I'll probe on sys and table name g. I've gone back to that same result we saw when we only had the five schemas, the different data distribution. So obviously the data distribution, the number of owners, the number of distinct owners, and the distribution of data has an impact here on what decision the optimizer is making. I've overridden it here with this uh, undocumented hint. I'm not advising you should use this, by the way. If I add in f, g, and h, now, because I got the hint in there, it still does all of access. So this demonstrates it wasn't as if the access of the, the sole access facility was impossible. It's just that the optimizer chose not to use it by default. Similarly, and in fourth predicate, and it can still use access. And even the fifth predicate, we can still use that solely an access operation. Even though by default, the optimizer has flipped to using an access and a filter in combination. So what's going on here? In terms of an access, right, a solely an access facility, if I'm doing, say, a in list of two elements, what the optimizer is choosing to do is say, okay, we're going in an owner equals uh, sys and table name equals f, and I'll probe the index for that particular branch. Then I go another probe on sys and g because they are two closely related but slightly separated index keys. When it flipped over to using an access and filter combination, it did something like this. It said, what I'll do is I'll just come in on sys. That will give me a slightly broader range of index keys to search through, and then I'll simply use a filter to find the F and the G. Diagrammatically, that's the different thing that it's actually gone on there, and that the optimizer has made that decision. Ultimately, what I'm saying is you shouldn't have to worry about this. Yes, you could override it with, uh, override it with undocumented hits. I would never recommend undocumented hits. It's just a bad idea. But it's just worth knowing that the concept of if all the predicates are available exclusively by the index, that does not mandate that the optimizer will use an access facility only. Even if the only predicates are index columns, the optimizer can choose an access. It can choose an access and filter combination. I'd be very surprised if it would use just a filter combination because typically that means it's not gonna bother using the index at all.